viewers. I welcome you all uh, to this uh, study circle meeting with the uh, Department of Income Tax, uh, jointly with the uh, yeah study circle meeting jointly with the Director of Income Tax, Intelligence, and Criminal Investigation, Bengaluru. Now, uh, can I request C. A. Divya, Chairperson, to escort uh, the Chief Guest and both the speakers onto the dais and then welcome them uh, with the floor. Okay. Saklani IRS, Director of Income Tax, Shashi Saklani, sorry. And we have with us two eminent speaker from the department, Sri Suresh Rao, Additional Director of Income Tax, Intelligence and Criminal Investigation. We also have with us Mr. Prakash, Deputy Director of Income Tax, Intelligence and Criminal Investigation, Managing Committee members, other income tax officials and uh, my professional colleagues. Very good evening and hearty welcome to each one of you for today's study circle which is jointly organized with Director of Income Tax, Intelligent and Criminal Investigation Bangalore to discuss on a very important topic, e-verification scheme and compliance. So first of all, thank you very much for the offices for uh, giving us the opportunity for organizing this program. I'm sure members are very eager to hear from all of you, sir. And also we have a lot of uh, doubts to get also clarified from you all. This will be very beneficial <coughs> program for all the members. This will also be recorded and will be reaching to majority of the members. I also request all the members to kindly ask more questions. So it will also benefit whoever is here and also who are, will be watching this later virtually. So before I proceed, um, to start the session, I would like to make a small announcement. As per head office instruction, further CP will not be granted for any virtual programs at the branch level. So branch at branch level, we are not organizing any virtual programs. Further, only physical programs will be organized. And request all of you to kindly be active more in physical programs. Thank you. Over to CP. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have the privilege in introducing today's chief guest, uh, Sri Shashi Saklani, IRS, Director of Income Tax, Intelligence and Criminal Investigation. Sri uh, Shashi Saklani is an IRS officer of 2004 batch and hails from Himachal Pradesh. He has served in the income tax department in various capacities, including in areas like international <coughs> taxation, investigation, assessment, and administration. His work has figured in three editions of departmental publication on best practices. Let us share. Saklani has also served as first secretary in High Commission of India, Singapore for three years where he dealt with India-Singapore economic relations. He was involved in bringing into effect the third protocol to the India-Singapore Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement, DTAA, which was a watershed in the bilateral tax agreement. After completion of his tenure in Singapore, Sri Saklani joined at NADT Nagpur in 2017 and worked there for six years in various capacities, including as the course director of orientation program 2019 and course director of the 75th batch of IRS. So this 
an engineering graduate in electronics and telecommunication and also a certified yoga instructor. He, has, he also completed his Master's of Public Administration in Economic Policy Management from Columbia University, New York on a World Bank Scholarship. Sir is also currently uh, posted as DIT INCI, Bangalore. With this brief introduction, I present before you uh, Shashi Saklani, sir. Now, uh, can I request all the dignitaries on the dais and all the managing committee members to join us for uh, lighting the lamp? Thank you, dignitaries. Thank you, members. Thank you, MC members. Uh, now, can I request uh, Sri uh, Shashi Saklani sir uh, for his inaugural address? Chairperson of the uh, Bengaluru chapter of ICA, Mr. Manjunath, uh, the Secretary of uh, ICA Bengaluru chapter, other office bearers, my colleagues from the Directorate of Intelligence and Criminal Investigation, esteemed members present here, ladies and gentlemen, wish you all a very good evening. I'm indeed happy today to be here before you all to share our views and our opinions and some factual details about something which has been rolled out recently by the government of India, which is the e-verification scheme 2021. I would have been happier if I would have seen all the chairs filled up here, but as I was discussing with uh, Ms. Divya in her office, probably if we could have organized it on a weekend, like a Saturday or a, uh, Sunday may not be a good idea, 
probably on a Saturday, maybe we would have had more people, more audience. So next time, um, whenever we intend to have such an interaction or such a session with ICAI, I think the appropriate time would be a Saturday, right? Yes. Wonderful. So even we would love, love to come on Saturdays because one, that we'll have more audience and more people to reach out to. And two is that uh, you know, we can also report to our senior officers that see we are working on meetings. <laughs> right? So coming back to what we are here for, my team and me, we are here basically to throw more light upon the e-verification scheme 2021. Now as some of you might be knowing about the scheme, but maybe in general there is not much awareness. What to talk about you know, people outside the department, department, I would confess that within the income tax department also, people, not many people are aware of the scheme as yet. One, because it has been recently rolled out and uh, two, not much of uh, awareness has happened in this regard. So with that in mind, we reached out to ICI uh, Bangalore chapter and we are happy that they acceded to our request and we are here today. We intend to have, as I already mentioned, we intend to have more such programs in the future. Probably, you know, in other cities also. I think you have jurisdiction over the entire state, right? Jurisdiction in the sense that your members come from yes. all over Karnataka. Right? Yeah, so if we organize it in other cities like Hubli, Dharwad, or Bangalore, or Mysore, so then also I think we'll reach out to you and we'll try to get as much audience as possible for this outreach. E-verification scheme 2021 has its origin in section 135 capital A of the Income Tax Act 1961. Now this section 135 capital A was introduced back in 2020. You know that was the time when faceless was launched, faceless scheme of assistance. <coughs> Was, was launched by the Income Tax Department and with the broader objective of the government of you know, ensuring non-intrusive tax administration and also to promote enhanced voluntary tax, com tax compliance, the faceless scheme, the faceless assessment scheme was initially rolled out on a pilot basis in 2020. Subsequently it was you know, it was uh, escalated or it was taken to the entire country and as we know today it has become a reality all over the country. And similarly, we have the faceless appeals scheme also now in place. So this particular scheme e-verification as I was mentioning can be traced back to those times in 2020 when the faceless scheme was introduced. So the view at that time was that there should be minimum intrusion into the privacy of the you know, the taxpayers' life, their personal or professional life, as we may put it. Plus, it should be easy for them to comply with the income tax notices or the income tax uh, various compliances. So with that background, this Section 135 capital A was introduced in uh, <clears throat> November 2020 and it was titled, Faceless Collection of Information. So within this section, it was mentioned that the government, that is the CBDT, the Central Board of Direct Taxes, will come out with a detailed scheme and will notify it in due course. So that happened in December 2021. 13th of December 2021, this scheme was notified. And this scheme was called E-Verification Scheme 2021. Now as the name suggests, E-Verification Scheme means Electronic Verification Scheme. So the idea was that there should not be any physical interface between the taxpayer and the tax administration. Whatever compliance was to be done should be done electronically to the extent it was electronically feasible. So this is the wording of that notification also, to the extent electronically feasible. So the notification was released on 13th of December 2021. And in 2022, we started with the e-campaign. So under this e-campaign, we reached out to the taxpayers throughout the country, telling them more about the scheme. 
but i guess that he campaign wasn't enough as we are gathering now so you know even after the first cycle of e verification scheme you know, even after rolling it out and you know in the middle of that cycle we are still seeing that not many people are quite aware of it hence our presence here today so the purpose of this scheme as i earlier mentioned was largely voluntary compliance easy compliance by the taxpayers and other stakeholders to reduce the tax burden the compliance burden sorry on the taxpayers and to ensure that there is non intrusive tax administration this scheme as we will learn out more also gives an opportunity to the taxpayer to update his or her return of income i am sure some of you would have definitely heard maybe probably all of you would have heard of a concept that was recently introduced updated return so this updated return was introduced by way of section 139 sub section 8a under which the taxpayer can file an updated return provided he is not increasing his loss or he is not claiming you know some more exemptions or something like that so there are certain conditions so the idea of this updated return scheme was basically to give an opportunity to the taxpayer to update his return if he or she thinks that there were certain incomes which he had forgotten he or she had forgotten in the original return of income so by way of this opportunity by way of updated return he or she can file this return and declare the true particulars of his or her income to the department now only what used to happen was since this opportunity of updated return was not there the cases were picked up for scrutiny and if any income was found to be non disclosed or undisclosed penalty used to be levied you know and a lot of tax was also levied so now under this updated return there is no penalty even though the tax that has to be paid is a little on the higher side but there are no penalties and no provision for prosecution as well so updated return is an opportunity for the taxpayer to go back and see his original return of income and update it if required now the c verification scheme and this updated return of income they are interlinked the idea behind e verification scheme and this updated return was basically this only to give an opportunity to the ssc to the taxpayer so that he or she knows about this and if any income has escaped or uh, you know disclosure in the return of income they can come forward and file an updated return so in the first cycle of e verification scheme in karnataka goa region that is the jurisdiction of directorate of inc karnataka and goa we had around 6500 returns that were pushed to us on the insight portal insight portal is our platform where we are through which we are inter interacting with the taxpayer so these cases were pushed on the insight portal and subsequently that the prescribed authority for the assessing officers they started issuing notices to these taxpayers now these cases were pushed to us in september 20 22 and 6 and 7 months down the line what we have seen that largely there has been compliance but still around 15 to 20% we are facing with non compliance it's 15 to 20% of cases which means either the assessee or the taxpayer has not seen our notice on his email or he has not logged on to his you know compliance portal on the insight with insight portal or he or she must have seen the notice but conveniently ignored it so by today's meeting and today's interaction the emphasis is that you people being stakeholders in this scheme we want that you should reach out to the taxpayers to your clients to your you know anyone whom you know your professional circles your you know family friends and tell them about this scheme and how it is beneficial to them you know if they are not availing of if their case is selected in the scheme and if they are not availing or they are not responding to the notices what is going to happen that would be a question which is which might come to our mind that what is going to happen if i don't respond to the notices now the thing is the scheme has been structured in such a way 
that if the taxpayer does not respond to our notices under the e-verification scheme 2021, we are going to take these cases up for further investigation, further verification. In the sense that they might be selected for reassessment or for uh, scrutiny assessment. So once we start with that process, then it's a long drawn process. You know, additions can be made. Since so we will have to go into the appeals, tribunal, high court, Supreme Court, things like that. But if he answers to the notices that are issued under this scheme, e verification scheme, and he is found to be largely compliant, then the chapter closes at that point itself. Then there is no further verification, no further investigation. Except on those points where he is not able to satisfactorily reply. So by complying to the notices under this scheme, you know, it's a win-win situation both for the tax department as well as for the taxpayers and other stakeholders as well. Another importance of this scheme is that it enables the tax administration to undertake what we call as uh, tax analytics based tax administration. So we have a lot of, lot of data which comes to us from many entities, from banks, from you know, the custodians, the brokers, uh, the registrars, a lot of information is coming to us. So based on that, we do a risk management kind of an exercise and then these cases are picked up wherever mismatch is found. And these cases are then put under verification, under the C-verification scheme. So I believe these are the broadly the contours of this E-verification scheme. My colleague, Mr. Prakash, would be discussing and Mr. Suresh also would be discussing about it in more detail. So whatever queries or questions you have when the presentation is on or even after the presentation, you can feel free to ask us any questions. And uh, my only objective today, as I mentioned already, was that you know, to make people aware, to make the stakeholders, especially the chartered accountants, the tax practitioners, make them aware of the scheme so that you know it, more and more people are made aware of it by word of mouth, by way of sharing or by way of you know the interaction or sessions that you have regularly amongst yourselves. So I once again thank the ICAI in Bangalore chapter for having us here today and I look forward to some meaningful discussions with my colleagues and if there are any questions that you would ask, like to ask me now I am here for some time, otherwise my colleagues would be here for a longer duration. Please feel free to, to, to ask any queries, questions, clarification that you might have on this scheme. Thank you all once again and thank you Ms. Divya, thank you Mr. Manjula. Thank you. Thank you sir for those uh, introductory remarks. Definitely, a stitch in time saves nine. Uh, we, the Chartered Accountants, our partners in nation building, will definitely work closely with the Department of Income Tax to reach out to public at large. Thank you, sir. Even at your busy, busy schedule, you, you could uh, deliberate on the subject and then uh, you are ready to uh, answer some questions uh, for, for the benefit of members present here. In case any questions are there, uh, please continue otherwise. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, we would like to uh, felicitate our uh, chief guest, uh, Shashi uh, Saklani, sir. Uh, please. I request all the MC members also, also to come out.
members present here and managing committee members of Bangalore branch of SIRC of ICI and all the uh, officers and uh, uh, director and deputy director, additional director of income tax department, intelligence and criminal investigation, Bengaluru. Uh, we thank uh, our chief guest uh, for being uh, here on this occasion and then addressing us. Thank you so much. Uh, now. Uh, uh, we are at the end of um, inaugural session. Would we'll be starting with the uh, technical session. Yeah. I have. Uh, we have uh, two speakers for the day. Um, it is my proud privilege uh, to introduce uh, uh, Sri P. Suresh Rao, Additional Director of Income Tax, INCI, Bangalore. He is a BCom graduate. He is a law graduate and CAIIB also, has joined department in year 1988 as Inspector of Income Tax. He has worked in different capacities and he, has, he was promoted as Additional Commissioner of Income Tax in, in the year 2020-20. He has worked in various sections like Investigation, Judicial, High Court Cell, Company Circle, Central Circle, Faceless Assessment, etc. He has worked in various places like Mangalore, Mysore, Bangalore, Chennai, Vello, Salem and Hosur. Presently posted as Additional Director of Income Tax, Intelligence and Criminal Investigation, Bangalore. With this brief introduction, I present before you Sri P. Suresh Rao, Additional Director of Income Tax, IMCI. We have another speaker for the day, uh, Sri uh, Prakash sir. Prakash V. Tanmanshi <coughs> is a Deputy Director of Income Tax, IMCI, Bangalore. He, he is a B. Civil and a law graduate also. He has joined the department in the year 1992. When he was officer in Bellary, he did his full-time LLB from VLS Law College, Bellary, now coming under Law University, Hubli. He has secured first rank to the college and university. He was awarded four gold medals by the then governor of Karnataka, Sri Hansraj Haradraj. <laughs> he has worked in several sections like Central Circle, Company Circle, Investigation, Faceless Assessment, TDS, and is presently posted as Deputy Director of Income Tax in INCI, Directorate of Bangalore. With this brief introduction, I present before you uh, Sri Prakash V. Uh, Tanmanchi, sir. Over to you.
श्री मंजुनाथ हल्लूर सेक्रेटरी अदर डिस्टिंग्विश मेंबर्स ऑफ द चार्टर्ड चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स इंस्टीट्यूट बैंगलोर एडिशनल डायरेक्टर ऑफ इनकम टैक्स श्री सुरेश रावसर एंड माय कलीग्स at the outset i also thank uh, the institute for giving me this opportunity to reach out to you and perhaps your customers and your clients so that the compliance to the income tax department becomes easier both for the public as well as for the department to receive that uh, compliance by and large uh, this scheme is uh, before i start again uh, I, i would like to uh, put a disclaimer this is always done what is expressed is my personal opinion for any further clarification you can always come back to us but the income tax act and the provisions are the final authority and sir and may not only what i say okay so that is a disclaimer to begin with okay so act is the final authority and the other provisions of law including other statutes are the final after putting that into perspective let's come to this e verification scheme 2021 our director of income tax shri shashi saklani already uh, elaborated a few things on that but uh, uh, at the very beginning i would like to uh, tell you people that bangalore receives one of the highest number of cases in the inside portal for verification i am sure one uh, the practicing chartered accountants will have at least one or the other client and some of them have multiple clients uh, which fall under the e verification scheme the problem is uh, why this uh, uh, seminar or workshop is conducted is because most of the communications are not reaching either the assessee or the or their authorized representatives many of them when we reached out at the last moment they are stating that this this come this login facility is not with us sometimes they say that it is with their authorized representatives in maybe income tax practitioners maybe advocates also but by and large it is always the chartered accountants okay that is another reason why we reached out to uh, the cas institute for conducting this program okay the basis of uh, uh, the basis on which our entire e verification scheme stands is the notification of the cbdt dated 13/12 2021 this is just for the information but what is the purpose of the scheme the purpose of the scheme is the department the department is in possession of huge amount of data you will be surprised to know the kind of data mining the department does we have information from banks we have information from sub registers we have information from portals we have information from uh, uh, stock exchanges we have information from uh, many there are many reporting entities like gold jewelers are there there are cooperative societies even there are trusts which have to furnish a particular kind of information in addition to this we have tds information we have huge amount of tds information uh, so all your receipts whether it is contract receipts or interest receipts or commission receipts or the tax of 1% on your sale of immobile property or cs <coughs> all this and 194 n section 194 and cash withdrawals from the banks then cash deposits into the bank accounts you will be surprised to know the number of people who got into problem because of cash deposits very often cash deposits are made without having proper sources 
So all this information, uh, our, our director of income tax, Sri Shashi Sakalani was saying about the RMS strategy. This all this data gets matched with your income tax returns. Where there is a difference thrown up, those cases will get selected under the e-verification scheme. Once there is a mismatch, it will get selected. This e-campaign 2021 was a pilot project uh, for the assessment year 2020-21. In fact, a message was sent to an e-filing portal to many of the assessees. Uh, the response was uh, far from satisfactory actually. Anyway, based on this, 68,000 cases were selected and nearly 35,000 of the assessees have resolved it satisfactorily. Large number of assessees have not responded. Uh, so, it becomes the duty of the chartered accountants to educate your clients and your customers. And it is also your duty to check the compliance in the e-filing portal. Okay. Uh, this I can log in here. Huh? This AIS information, all of you, many, many of your chartered accounts, you already know that AIS information is available in your e-filing portal. Yeah, actually this is my personal e-filing portal account. I have already logged in actually. See here, many of you will be knowing, but for the benefit of those people who do not know, if you go under services, you will have AIS, no? AIS is, I am actually live now in e-filing portal. This is unreal information this statement. Proceed. I will be taken to this page. You can click on AIS. Again on unreal information statement. See, that is my name. That is the salary income that I am receiving for the particular period for three months, six months like that. If you click on any of those fields, for example, I'll click on thirteen lakh ninety four thousand. It will throw open. It will throw open this drop down menu. Okay. Here you get the feedback. Technical person is not there. No rights. 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 Thank you. So, here the feedback is there, no? Be below that is the optional, you get the optional tab, no? Once you click on the optional tab, you get close feedback type box here, okay? Once you get this close feedback type, if you go to the drop down menu, see here, 
here that particular information, so in my case it was salary from Principal Chief Commissioner of Income Tax, you can, you can click whether the information is correct, whether income is not taxable, whether information is not fully correct or whether the information is duplicate and last one information is completely denied. See our DIT, our Director of Income Tax was stressing on non-intrusive nature of uh, tax administration. Okay, This is exactly what it is actually. See here, you can sit in your living rooms, get, get into your refiling portal, get into your AIS information and if any of the AIS information is not correct, you should click this and either deny this, you should say that it is either correct, it is partially correct, it is duplicate or it is denied. Okay, see, the system is so wonderful, it is in a transition stage, but system is so wonderful that once you deny that information, the department reaches out to the source. For example, somebody has received a commission of rupees 10 lakh and that person says that I have not received that, this is a wrong information. If you deny this, we go back to the person who has given that information, take a re-clarification from them and what if you are saying is correct that 10 lakh commission amount gets removed from your e-filing portal by one or the other way. It could be by filing of correctly TDS return or by any other means. So, but what we are seeing is unfortunately our uh, systems people have also put that tab as optional. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yes. mm -hmm. I wish they had put it as compulsory. If they put it as compulsory, more people will click it, either confirm the information or deny the information or say that information is partially correct and partially not correct. That would have given a better this one, but I will take this as a suggestion from you people and we will also put up before our authorities saying that it should be made as compulsory. Yes? Mandatory response can be made. Ah, mandatory response, compulsory or mandatory response. Mandatory response. Yeah, there are some, some fields, uh, where it says, feedback is in compulsory. Ah, yes, okay. Yeah, even I have not come across it. Uh, yeah, I see. Feedback is mandatory. So mandatory is also there, sir. In your case, it may not be there. Yeah. No, no, but... Uh, so, what yes, kind of information yes, yes, you are asking? Whether it is mandatory or mandatory or optional. Yeah, yeah. Actually, 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 no, sir. See, suppose there is sales information. Yes. You say, I have 100 crore sales. Yes. Say, big sales is uh, saying that it is uh, optional. It is not optional. So, it has to be mandatory. It has to be mandatory. 30,000 sales on party. It yes. is saying optional. Yes. For yes. same category. Yes. There must be some limits uh, which have been uh, identified for each of the kind of the transaction. I am glad because this is, this is your part of the work, this is your end of the work. I can, I, I don't have the liberty to get into a refiling portal with your password and I will not be able to see your or your client's uh, information. So, to make it easy and to make it more interactive, I have logged into my own, my own account, uh, my own, under my PAN. And uh, this is the limited information uh, what I have. So, this is how I also get more educated from you people. And um, uh, and I I'll, I'll also look forward to uh, get to know more about that compulsory information. So probably where the transaction limit is very very high, they must have made it compulsory. And, and whether it is for the purpose, say suppose at the same category sales, I you only where it is compulsory. Yes. And the small I leave it. Correct. So whether the purpose will serve? Correct. Because total sales may not tell you what I do. Yeah, correct. Again, it will be partially correct. But the, the moment you say that this guy, this part, this is partially correct or partially information is partially correct and partially not correct, but uh, we have a mechanism to reach to the source of the that information and get it corrected. No, no, but everything is correct. Optional as well as compulsory, both correct. But I view only for the where it is compulsory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I leave it optional. Optional, leave it. Actually, yeah, yes. sir, especially for GST dealer, you know, for certain cases, yeah. it will yes. learn into hundreds of pages. Yes, yes. 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 information.
for each yeah, person yeah. will be reported and it seems to be reported. Yes. See, if you go for doing that job, you know, yes, yes. But, uh, you, even the option, and if you go and accept it, yes. it takes not less than two days for accepting one particular case itself. Okay, but I have seen at least one case yes, where it was it. optional, mm -hmm. but the information was wrong. Because we, because nowadays it is completely, nowadays it is completely online. We don't get to, um, uh, what is that? We don't get to interact with each other like we are doing now. So, but I have seen a odd case where the the uh, it was optional, but his information was wrong. But that person approached me because he knew me, and he asked me. He did, he did not even understand whether to click optional or not and if it goes to optional whether he will get to go back to feedback and if he goes back to feedback whether he has to give that or not because it's not understandable. But for that purpose uh, there is uh, instruction manual within this actually. I will show you that also if you want. Uh, go back. I'll go back to pending actions, okay? Under pending actions, there is a compliance portal, okay? Under the compliance portal, there is e-verification, right? At the bottom, I'll click on e-verification and I'll click on proceed. See again, we have a set. This is annual information statement, e campaign, and e verification. Okay, one e one under one e campaign, one is pending for me. But nevertheless, I'll just go to I click on e verification. Okay, here you have one resources. Can you see that resources there? Here on the top, you can see the cursor. If you click the resources, you can see again in the drop down menu here. Huh? What all is there? Submit response to notices, FAQs, okay. Compliance portal, FAQs. E campaign, FAQs, okay. Submit response notice, quick reference guide, okay. See what will happen? Um, I'm sure many of you will know, but for the benefit of those who pe people who do not know, uh, why? By dealing with e-verification scheme, you can go to this, these FAQs. FAQs will, by and large, will give you a lot of clarity, clarity on how to give responses. Because I am telling you people, response and the format of response and the presentation of response has been very, very far from satisfactory. It's very, been very poor, very poor. And I also appreciate that when the response is given by chartered accountants, the response has been very good, excellent. That is the, another reason why people are reaching out to you people. The, when the, the response comes from an, an, an individual on his own, it's good that the person may be trying, but if you have your clients, if you have your customers, please educate them, please educate them. Well, first of all, first of all, they should know that they have received a mail. Many of them do not know that they have received a mail. Many of them, either, the, either there are a few cases where chartered accountants or advocates or income tax practitioners have also not checked them. But there are, there are several cases where the assessee himself has checked, has not checked them. But, and we do not know who is operating as authorized representative you are operating or as individuals they are operating on their own. Okay, and uh, these are the uh, FAQs which is under the resources under e verification. For this, you have to go to pending actions, you have to go to e campaign and e verification, and the e under e verification under the resources, you will get all these FAQs. Okay, now I will briefly come back to my presentation. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. 
and coming back now what is compliance portal it is a dedicated portal under project inside because when you go into e filing portal at the moment you go to ais information it takes you to inside portal always okay and there is a two way communication possible from the department to the assessi and from assessi to the department i have also given three quick links for uh, reaching the compliance portal you can go under www.inputtest.gov.in you can go under e portal or you can go even under compliance.insight also and what is e verification uh, as our uh, uh, director of income tax issues aklani sir again said uh, it is a issue specific verification process issue specific ver verification process means again you go back to the purpose of the scheme where we said we have a huge amount of data the kind of data mining the department do, does you be surprised that data if it doesn't match with your itr it is taken up for scrutiny so it is always issue specific okay and that information which you give is captured by the by we officers of the department if it is if the if the satisfactory answer is received the case will be closed else otherwise further queries may be raised further queries means what first in the first part it will be you will receive notices under section 1336 okay and 1336 if you do not give see first of all you have got first opportunity when you get into your form 26 as or ais information that time only you can deny that information if you do not do that you will be visited with a notice under section 1336 if you answer satisfactorily it will be closed if you still do not answer satisfactorily will be constrained to take the case for further verification which will be under cas or under section 148 and if it is taken under section 148 and if you do not rectify it by filing updated return under section 139a the consequences will be different okay when you file your updated return under section 139a you may pay a little more extra tax but you will be completely uh, what is that term uh, exempted from penalty because the moment additions are made under section 148 or even under 1433 then obviously penalty proceedings will be initiated and uh, we have seen of late that unless a proper uh, and a reasonable reply is given uh, the penalty proceedings are usually they end up with levying of penalty you may go in appeal that is a again a different issue but as long as you correct yourselves at 1336 lay label by filing an updated return if your information is wrong then you will be saved from penalty completely ah this actually i was not knowing whether uh, i will be able to log in uh, directly so i had made the screenshots also of how to get into your uh, e filing portal Uh, this is again uh, if you click on as uh, after logging in you have to click on as information you will be taken to this slide if you click on this slide you will be taken to tis and as information again if you click on as information the same slide which i uh, showed you live then here that optional is there after clicking optional you will get this box and you will get a drop down menu from the drop down menu you can either accept the information deny the information accept it as partially or say that it is a duplicate entry or whatever you like and as far as karnataka region is concerned out of this limited cases of about 6 to 7000 which we received a large number of uh, uh, assessees filed updated return and uh, i do not really do not have the correct figures but the collection under section 140b even with this limited responses from the people even with, 
the collection under section 140B from Karnataka is highest in India. Highest in India. And that is thanks to the notices issued by 133.6. Here again we have to see that had we not issued this 133.6 notices and got the compliance from these people, all those cases would have been selected under 148. And all those cases, and with the delay of time, the interest burden increases, penalty increases, tax amount increases. Okay, so this is a great way, this updated return scheme, though you will end up paying a little extra tax, you must be aware, if you file within one year from the end of the assessment year, you will end up paying 25% tax more. If you if you file the upgraded return, within two years from the end of the assessment year, you will end up paying 50% of the tax more than the usual rates. Okay. And see, these most of these cases are closed. Very few cases will not get closed even if you file updated return. That is because we have asked you to explain 10 lakh and 2 lakh rupees. Somebody files an updated return by declaring 10 lakh. 2 lakh, they do not declare it and they do not explain it also. Why 2 lakh is not declared. So that even if it is that 2 lakh, it doesn't get closed at that stage. So my uh, what I would like to impress upon you people is filing updated return does not necessarily mean the closure of the case. Okay, It can be again selected for further queries because of insufficient explanation or insufficient filing of or insufficient declaration of your income under 139.88. And as I already said, the most important aspect of the scheme is that information is made available to the SSC at the very earliest stage. At the very earliest stage means what actually to financial year 2023-2022-23 or even financial year 2023-24, as soon as you are, uh, if, if somebody has deducted tax from you, if that tax deductor files the tedious return, and that gets processed by TDS CPC Gaziaba. That information appears in your 26 days at that point only. And as and when they file the second TDS return, third TDS return, it goes on getting updated in your 26 days information. Okay. So you have a very early start for either responding to this in the in your AIS information. Now, this is the most important part uh, which uh, I thought I will present before you. Ensuring the receipt of the communication. I told you 50% of the cases have not responded or even 40, must be around 40% of the cases have not responded. How do you ensure the, how do you ensure the receipt of communication in the first place? What you should do, your, this one is there. Uh, your profile is there in the e-filing portal. Update your profile, update your email, update your mobile number. All these things will go in a long way in seeing that. Hey, when I say update, I don't just mean you chartered accountants. I mean all of your clients. It is your duty of it is your duty to educate your clients. Okay. And uh, this new concept, even I, uh, I found this new concept here. Include your email and SMS under safe list and white list. Okay, what is safe list and white list? Safe list and white list, in simple words, it prevents your email from going to your spam folder. Because I have seen a number of cases where the SSCs have uh, said that I have not received the mail, sir. It has gone to my spam folder. It has gone to my spa spam folder means what? This is a mail from the income tax department. It's your duty to see that you you view it, and that see. And uh, we, there are innumerable uh, cases here where once email is served, it reaches your domain. Then it is deemed to have been served. 
uh, even under the concept of uh, service of notice as per civil procedure code. I, have, I'll, I can tell you cases where Justice Surabhi Ahlu Aliya in one case has held that service of notice on WhatsApp, the blue tick is taken as final service. Of course, it was a case, in a case of domestic violence. But service part, be rest assured, as long as it is served on mail, it is deemed to have been served, especially for the income tax department. I'm not just talking about e-verification scheme, even under ITBA, even under ITBA, as long as the uh, mail is served, it is deemed to have been served for the purpose of Income Tax Act and for the purpose of CPC also. Okay. So please see, uh, please educate your clients about the safe list and um, white list so that your mails from the department do not go to spam folders. Okay. This is and how to respond to the notice. Okay, this is how you respond to the notice. Click on, uh, you go to the e-portal, click on e and uh, see uh, from next year onwards, uh, uh, it, it will also be uh, a SMS also will be triggered to either to you or to your client, whosoever uh, uh, mobile number is given for that purpose. Okay, like just, I think it is happening for um, faceless assessment or not now. Yes. SMS is triggered. Yes. So they will be incorporated for e-verification scheme also. And as soon as, as as soon as an email is issued to you, an SMS will be generated. Because again, e-verification is also in infant stage actually. So it takes some time. Click on e-verification tab. Click on applicable financial year. Click on DIN to download the notice and click on submit to submit the reply okay. how to attach documents in submit response screen taxpayer can attach document by clicking on browse okay document type can be selected from the drop down provided and taxpayer also can attach more by clicking on attach more and compatibility this i have done some work to let you know that the compliance portal and other entries can be best viewed on Internet Explorer 11 and latest version of Mozilla and Chrome. They will work on others also, but they work best on these. Okay. And as far as this, uh, your reply is concerned, uh, each time maximum amount of maximum number of 10 documents can be attached. Uh, it, they can be in a PDF, they can be in Excel list. XLS and DOCX and CSV format and when you are giving a reply there is a response column there suppose um, if there is a huge amount of uh, explanation is to be given obviously I request you people to give a proper explanation letter most of you are please do not squeeze in where there is one issue which can be easily explained that should be that can be put in the remarks column okay Remarks column will take a maximum of 4,000 characters and when you attach the documents, each document description is about 100 characters. But when you have multiple issues, please give an extra. I have seen assessees who will give everything they will say, I have given cash book, I have given bank account, I have given farm 26 years, I have given what I have asked, I have said as per your return, you have declared interest of 25 lakh rupees, but as per my information, your interest income is 50 lakh. <coughs> he doesn't give reply, what is the, where is the difference of 25 lakh gone? But he gives me bank account statement, he gives me cash book, he gives me 26 years. It in, see, it increases my work that much more and ultimately I may end up not understanding. And when, what happens when we do not understand? We officers, we, we will try to end on the error on the revenue side, not on the assessee side. So by selecting the case for further verification. Okay. And this is again, I have already showed you how to go to e-verification. I thought in case the facility is not there, I have given the slides where you can log in, 
go to that view on this compliance portal. Click on the compliance portal and you will get this screen. Click on proceed and you will go to this tab. Uh, I, I took you people to this. Uh, uh, there again, the resources is there where you can download the FAQs and for and for answering your queries you can click on e-verification and there you will be able to download your notice as well as submit your response okay and once you go in there it will ask for financial year and it will ask for case type case type can be anything it can be high value transaction it can be return not filed uh, it is user friendly and understandable okay See, case type in this case is non-filer verification. Okay. Uh, this I have already told you. Click on resources, uh, you will get different FAQs <coughs> and reference guides. And this is the screenshot of the resources. And uh, some more clarifications on uh, your responses. Can the response once you file can be changed? No. <laughs> It cannot be changed. But what you can do is you can give a second reply stating clarifying your stand on the existing reply. And how many replies can you give? You can give multiple number of replies, but till till the PVR is closed by us. Once it is closed by us, once I submit PVR means preliminary verification report. That is for the purpose of internal communication of the department. Once I submit a PVR, you will not be able to give reply anymore. Huh? It is like your assessment proceedings, no? In assessment proceedings also, the time barring date may be 31st March of the next year. But if the assessing officer gives you uh, saying that please furnish your information by 31st August, 31st November, 31st December, he gives enough opportunities and he satisfied that sufficient opportunities are given. And if you still do not give, he will complete the proceedings. And after that, if you give the reply, whether it appears in the system or not, it will not be taken into account because order is already passed, order is already completed. It's as simple as that. And once you submit your reply, you can always view your reply by clicking on view hyperlink. Okay. See, the most common issues that we faced are uh, many of these uh, assessors, you please insist on your clients, uh, especially the salaried class. When they file the return, they will just give you form 16. You should ask them for the interest certificates from all the banks and bank account statements of all the banks. And I have seen cases where SP account interest of 20 lakh, 30 lakh is not key. Why? Because there is no TDS. There is no TDS on that. They think that it will not get detected, but it is getting detected. I am telling you, we have a huge amount of data, especially from the banks. 20, 20 lakh rupees interest. On, of course, uh, they will be having big transactions, SD accounts, there may multiple SD accounts and SD account information, and uh, they are not bothered, just, I mean, they are not bothered, obviously they are not bothered about 10,000 exemption under section 80TA. Because when you are trying to save 20 lakh, 10,000 is not a botheration. Okay. And purchase of vehicles. Many people just give in, in saying that uh, vehicle is purchased from the bank account. Okay, but I don't know the source of deposit in your bank account. Please give a proper explanation. A compensation on compulsory acquisition of immobile property. Of course, uh, in respect of uh, metro rail projects, there are some decisions that it's exempt because it is coming under right to fair compensation and transfer transparency in land acquisition act. Okay. So those cases will not be. But otherwise, if it is other than metro rail projects and if you are claiming exemption, you have to prove that it is that the said compensation is coming under that right to fair compensation act. If it is not done so, it will be taken up for further scrutiny. 
and other common issues are sale of securities, cash deposit cases, cash withdrawal cases. Cash withdrawal cases, you, you people please do not worry whether it is taxable or not taxable. Just explain your cash withdrawals. That will be enough because I will see a person's turnover, a person's turnover is 5 crore. But cash withdrawal is 20 crore. Obviously, the department being as it is, we will have queries. Why, why was the 20 crore cash withdrawal required in the first place? Whether it is subject to tax or not is a different thing. What, when we say that when your turnover is 5 crore and you are showing a cash withdrawal of 20 crore, when you ask you to explain why there is a such a huge cash withdrawal, please explain. No? If you simply say that it is tallying with my cash book and it is uh, for the business purpose will not suffice. What may happen, see at e-verification level nothing may happen, but it will definitely be taken up for further query. See, these, these are another uh, set of uh, common errors. Huh? Rental, see, there are four, I have seen a case where there are four uh, brothers who are co-owners and it is one property, one is declaring gross rent of and you will be surprised the kind of amount. Huh? <laughs> one is declaring 5 crore as a gross rent from the same property. Another is declaring 4 crore 50 lakh as, as gross rent from the same property. Third is declaring 4 crore 20 lakh as gross income from the same property. because. Now the return has everything. Return has the description of the property. Return has the name of the tenants. Return has the tan of the tenants. The return also has the percentage share of the co-ownership in the property. It is very easy for us to find out. Especially if it is such a case where there are four co-owners with equal percentage and not many properties. It becomes very easy. I, in my case, the person, one, one brother who has declared correctly, his case got closed. Other two brothers who got, uh, who declared lesser amount, it, it, it cannot be closed even if I want to close it out. It, unless there is a proper explanation. Because it is the same property for all the four brothers, it is the same tenants, it is the same percentage of co-ownership share. And some people, we have issued a notice huh? saying, please explain interest income, please explain rental income, please explain some other income. They will say, sir, I have filed updated return. I have paid 6 lakh rupees tax. Now, it will not solve my problem. That's why uh, you people are the intermediaries. When updated return is filed, please give a proper explanation that what is filed, what is not filed. Uh, and even if sub, even if you differ on one issue, please say that this is not correct. And and explanation why it is not correct and evidence as to why it is not correct. Simply saying that I have filed updated return, sir, I have paid six lakh tax will not suffice. It will only increase my work also. It will increase the assessor's work also. Okay. And insufficient information, not furnishing the documents called for. Okay, and in the reply, uh, and, and, the, and the notice says, please submit updated returns, copy of the updated returns, please submit the copy of the updated returns, even if it is filed to the department. Okay, if 26 says, form 16, and we ask that, they simply say that we have filed the updated return, but they don't give the supporting documents. This will only uh, put, you put your case behind. Okay. Now, always submit an explanation letter huh, as to what is declared. Huh. If any of our information is wrong, please say that it is wrong. Instead, just simply don't say that I have filed the updated return. Huh. Please give explanation. Issue wise, if you have one issue, you give explanation for one issue. If you have got 10 issues, please you will have to give explanation for 10 issues. And 
just like again our uh, director of income tax research Sakhlandi was emphasizing, the emphasis is on voluntary compliance and the emphasis is on non-intrusive verifications. Non-intrusive verifications means that the same example again I'll give about the AIS verification. Uh, nowadays, earlier you people used to uh, 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 come to the departments. You know? Now you can sit in the living room of your house and give the replies whether it is ITB, CAS cases, tasteless cases, or whether even appeals now, say it appeals. And so is e file e verification scheme. You can uh, give the responses from the comfort of your drawing rooms. Uh, this is how the typical notice looks like. Okay. See, it is issue wise, uh, and you are expected to give a reply issue wise. Okay. And see, the second part, the second part says it, it, it also gives you where to give your reply in the e portal. Okay. And if you, uh, it's a little bit uh, small font, but I'll tell you the last line says. If applicable, you may consider filing updated return. Updated return is the key word, voluntary compliance is the key word. If, you, if any income has, miss, has been missed out, please file updated return, pay the taxes, case is closed. Don't wait for the department to take, up it, take it up for scrutiny either under section 148 or under 143.3. And see, uh, the notices are usually as clear as this. Uh, we have information that your interest income is 14 lakh rupees, whereas you have declared only 3 lakh rupees. Very often I get a reply saying that my interest is declared correctly, sir, and close. One lakh reply. What, what am I expected to do? I'll try to write to the bank. If the bank gives me, I'll sit and see. I will we'll do that also. In, 95% of the cases we have sought replies from the banks from because of such assessments. And we have, now we sit in the place of the assessee and try to defend the assessee if his, intention, his, his contention is correct, saying that I have checked the, I have checked the bank statement, interest is only 2 lakh and not 10 lakh as per my information, therefore the case is closed. But it will serve only better if you people give the bank statements yourselves, interest certificates yourselves and a proper explanation. And see here, this, this part of the notice nobody sees. Here everything is given, how to log into e-filing portal, how to download your uh, uh, notice in the section 133.6, how to uh, give reply by clicking on submit. And uh, this is your reply sheet, how does it look? I was telling you, you know, the people can see this is the remarks column where which can take about 4000 characters. If there are many issues involved, please don't give reply in this only. Please furnish an explanation letter. But if it's a small one, uh, one issue case, you can give the reply here also. And these are the attachments. This, this description you can give up to. 100 characters. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, that will be all as far as the e-verification scheme is concerned. Since uh, we are from the directorate of IMCI, we also look into your Form 61, Form 61A and Form 61B. The uh, due date for compliance date for Form 61 is over, but for Form 61A and Form 61B is 31st May and today is 18th May. Okay, please uh, comply with these if you have your clients who are the reporting entities for the purpose of Form 61A and 61B, various SFTs and all. And also, we have noticed that in Form 61A and 61B, there are lots of common mistakes. Please avoid those. Uh, one of the basic mistake is incorrect pan, then deliberate and non-deliberate coating of wrong pan. When I say deliberate coating of wrong pan means they have to 
give the PAN, no, they do not have or they are not verified from the client. For example, bank has not verified from the client. They will simply put one wrong PAN and you, do, you people do not know the consequences. It will end up in the department generating a notice against that person. And that, that notice will go to the wrong person. And he will end up saying that this is not my information. Okay, so when you are filing form 61A and 61B of your clients, please take care, especially about the, especially about the PAN and date of birth, date of incorporation, and account numbers, reference account numbers. Like I have an account number and there is a joint account or minor account or whatever it is. Okay, then aggregate gross, gross amount and about data quality reports and also about the corrected statements. This this slide is regarding form 61, 61A and 61B. With this, I conclude my small talk on e-verification scheme 2021. And I would like to tell you people that the next set, next set of e-verification has already been rolled out and we have received our sir already about 8,000 sir. 7,200 cases and this time the scope has widened. This is only the first installment for Bangalore. 7,200 cases and now uh, the, uh, uh, the firms, the companies, the trusts, the co uh, cooperative banks, local bodies have come under the ambit of e-verification in this year. So the number of notices generated will be more and it is more likely that you people will all be uh, and your clients may be getting the notices. Please ask them to uh, update the e file, their profile. I told you about the safe list and white list. Ask them to update those so that the mails do not go to spam folder. Huh? I'll end by saying that only two things are certain in life. One is death, other is tax. <laughs> so please uh, comply to the notices as, as early as uh, possible because uh, uh, tax is a certainty. Okay. And uh, with this, I thank, uh, once again, thank the Institute for uh, providing me this opportunity uh, to make the presentation. And now, me and uh, Suresh Rao, sir, our additional director, will take any questions. Uh, if you have. Sir, sir,
most of the your PC may report the due date is mentioned wrongly. They are mentioning 30th June. That was the feedback what we are getting. So once again I want to highlight this is the due date for 61A and B is 31st May only. And in Bangalore, we have got around 28,000 ITDRN members. That is the registered entities registered with the department in the Karnataka circle. Whereas the number of 61 filers is only 3,600. I don't know why. Why there is a non-compliance? Maybe people for one time have taken the ITDR number and discontinued with this. So I request all of you to kindly advise your claims. If they are not supposed to file the that particular 61A, let them get the registration cancelled. So that what happens now, you clear for compliance management, we are sending notice to the that ITDR and is. So again, non-failure. Then if you are not filing again, penalty, all these things. So my request with you is that please advise if I got any clients who are registered in ITDR and as REs, please advise them if they are not supposed to file the this SFTs, get them cancelled. And if they are supposed to liable to file the SFTs, please ask them to file as soon as possible, that is within the due date, and file the SFTs correctly and completely. Because last two years we were very, very, we are not taking any actions regarding the penalty provisions. And this year we may take go to penalty provisions for filing incomplete SFTs or delaying filing the SFTs. So this is my request to you. It is duty cast upon you to see that you should work with us in getting the compliance of the input tax matters. So now going to e-education, if I got any doubts, you can just get it verified now. Yeah. At the outset, I want to ask why it is titled as criminal investigation. We are the same. We are the same. Yeah, associates. Okay, if they don't, uh, you know, pay the taxes in time, etc. You can levy interest penalty. Etc. Sir, you are supposed to ask about the EU, not about the So that's a good So coming back to uh, Navin, Navin's question, uh, what has happened is uh, the correct thing is uh, this uh, direct rate of uh, intelligence and criminal investigation was supposed to be a parallel body for the present investigation department and it was in fact supposed to be going further than the investigation when it comes to criminal investigation but for some reasons that did not happen. Uh, that, uh, uh, that part of uh, taking it under as intelligence and criminal investigation was curtailed but the, the division remained, the division remained, once the division remained uh, a kind of work was interested to that, which is this uh, IMCA work or this uh, verification work. But the nomenclature continued as uh, uh, intelligence and criminal investigation. Uh, as uh, as uh, that, but the question is taken uh, in the right spirit, and we will put it before the higher authorities to change at least the part of the criminal investigation nomenclature because. I also have, uh, uh, once the notices have gone and uh, when the assessees, especially one or two old ladies who were educated ladies, but old ladies who read the criminal investigation, they really got scared in the peers. So we will try to rectify that, but that is something which is really not in your hands, but we will take it up to the time. What I would like to give a suggestion, sir, if you are using that uh, terminology, you can push this to all the cases of Benami, PMLA, money laundering, etc. Black money cases. There, that word may be apt. Yes. Yes. Sir. Second question, one more. The question is where the close will come. What you explain, sir, in your portal, when you submit on it, there the word close will come. Yes. But uh, how do you know that it is closed? I mean, uh, it may not uh, 
generate a notice under 143 to or 148? No, no, no. That is that is a that is an unknown quantity as as far as you people are concerned because when we say that it is closed, it means that I have submitted a report. See, I, I might have submitted a favorable report, then it is completely closed for you. But if I, if I submitted an unfavorable report as far as you are concerned, so it is not, it is closed for the purpose of e-verification scheme or the limited purpose of notice under section 133.6 only. If the proper explanation is not given or if the officer is not satisfied, it may be taken up for further queries. In all likelihood, it will be under section 143.3 or 148 as the case may be. Last question. Yes. As we see the sources of information under 148 and 149, one of the sources is this uh, 135A, baseless uh, scheme under section 135A. And yes. there it comes in the proviso, meaning to say that when 148 notice will be issued, at that time department, if it is selected the case under the parameters of 135A, that means at that time they are not going to give me the information basically. Yes, that, that, is, that, is, the, that is the interpretation. But taken. indirectly you have already given here. Yes. Indirectly you have already we given. We have here. already given an opportunity and from uh, uh, from the directorate of uh, I and CI Bangalore, uh, uh, my, my additional DI and my DI have been so strict that in each case we have given a minimum of three opportunities already. Yes. So, opportunity as such is already given. Interpretation, what will happen or not, uh, we do not know. But as of now, the interpretation is that you will get, suppose the case is selected for further scrutiny under section 148, you will directly get a notice that income is escaping assessment. What will happen at judicial level, at appeal level, nobody knows. But we always have. This one defense, the department has one defense that we have already given an opportunity under section 133.6. Sir, response under 6. response, yeah. you know, uh, some uh, drop down buttons are there. Yes. Duplicate and other things. Yes. Why can't we put uh, the income declared in next year? For yeah. certain things, previous things happened in current year, income will be declared in next year. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yes. It's a, uh, it's like a professional service. Instead of things. duplicate entry, what you are saying? See, it's like TDS is directed. Yes. It's like construction contract. Yes. Basically, this year advance is given. Yes. But construction only starts in next year. Okay. In the, uh, till that period, the builder or the other guy will not declare the income in current year. Ha, huh. that for that. Huh. No, no, you are talking about the drop down menu or you are talking about the drop response? Down, but, uh, drop, down. drop down menu, there you know, the line items are there, income is, uh, uh, thing is correct. But we can't say duplicate, if they say correct, immediately can take up, uh, take up for action. No, no, if you say that it is incorrect. No, I can't say incorrect. No, no, you can say information is incorrect, no? No, 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 no sir. No, information is correct. Index is declared next year. Next year, income is declared in next year. Uh, what are the other instruments are there? You can put it in the explanation box, no? Huh? You can put it in the explanation box. Correct. But drop down button I have to select. Drop down button of the others. I'll just go back to that slide, okay? Drop down it. Yes. Yeah. Ah, the original zoom. Okay. Or otherwise, shall I go live on the? Yeah, live. You have been logged out. It's okay.
लॉग इन already passed that stage no but when we see there in your income tax return we will definitely go to your tds schedule and there there you would have carried forward if you have carried forward and if it matches it will be closed that is my issue because in the tds schedule it will always be able to check whether it is tds schedule we are declaring yes. that but yes. uh, income sheet it will be zero yes the fourth option will actually follow as follows इज At the level of 133, six. As I said, we'll always go to your TDS schedule, both your uh, employee TDS, employer TDS schedule as well as TDS2 and DCS schedule, and see if the uh, uh, that particular tax is carried forward for the next year. Then it will be treated as explained, and the case will be closed. Yes, somebody else was asking. Yes. ट्वेंटी what is to be taxed is what is the interest accrued during the year okay so if just because tds is not made by the bank is not the final uh, is not the conclusion what is interest is if it is accrued in the year it is required to be taxed because in many cases in many cases some people follow cash system of accounting some people follow mercantile system of accounting in cash system of accounting they will take the interest on receipt basis only on a in whereas in business cases in the mercantile system of accounting it has to be always on accrual basis salary cases cash system okay salary case salary case you are saying that it is not deducted by the bank bank next financial year they are taking the No, but what is the issue here? You have declared it in this year, or you have declared it in the next year? Next year, year of this year. But then it will not see if it is not deducted by the bank. It will not appear in your form 26A, and it will not get selected for e-verification. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, information will be there. Yes, information it will be there. There you have to give the explanation. No, there we can select information pertinent. Yes, there you will have to give the reply and close it. It will not get closed at the form 26A. Okay. 
sir, on the basis of uh, information AAS, uh, you file updated return. Mm -hmm. And the AAS will be updated regularly. So, ah, what yes. you will consider? No, 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 no. Your case will be taken up under view verification scheme only after you file the return. That means it is not in the mid year. <coughs> Understood? See, all this replying on this drop down window is available for you at any time during the uh, uh, as soon as the TDS return is filed by the deductor. Okay. But as far as e verification scheme is concerned, it will happen only when you have filed your return and there is a difference. Or you have not filed the return and there is an income which is accrued. Did any revised TDS returns filed by the deductor? See, in that case, you will have to declare correctly whether the deductor has <coughs> done, whether the deductor has uh, revised uh, subsequently or not. No, no, sir. What he means to say is, uh, based on this information, he has filed updated return. He has filed updated return. Based on your notice, he has filed updated return, paid the tax. Again, it gets updated. updated. So, now he cannot revise updated return. This is his problem. That's what the, my, my, my first my first prayer to you people is that it should be as per your income, not necessarily as per your 26 years or AAS. Okay. See, if that is so, you can always defend yourselves. Understood? What is what is your income during the year should be taxed. Your income during the year and the real income should be taxed. Back if if somebody has filed updated return and that that income is correct or not? See, updated return that information is correct as per AAS. Then later it got updated. It got updated means the income has increased or decreased. Increased. Which one is the correct one? Because if we increase only, I can file updated return. No, no, that is okay. That is okay. That is a matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Okay. Your income under 194H has increased yeah. and your income under 194A has decreased. Now increase is 10 lakh, decrease is 5 lakh. You will file a return declaring the Net difference increase. amount. Okay. Now, now, essentially you have filed a return where your income has, dec has decreased also, no? If the income is decreased, I cannot file a revised return. Revised or you are see, like again, don't get confused between revised return and updated return. Yeah. Huh? Updated return. See, revised return is not time board. Okay. I'll not I'll not further give you the idea. I was I already made an indiscretion by speaking this actually. Which goes against the interest of the department. The chances of getting 148 is there, sir. So, Nestor Ecosys is only 148. No, no, see, what you are saying is you have you have declared your income as per 26 AS and you have declared correctly as per 26 AS and you are saying that later on somebody files updated a revised TDS return because of which your income increases. Yes. What I am telling you is what you should have declared should be the correct income irrespective of the form 26 AS. Even if the deductor, ah, yes, you are supposed to know your affairs. So how will he substantiate? Later if this goes for scrutiny and 148, how will he submit the supported document for that? No, no, no. If he has already, see, he has said that he has the, the, the deductor has filed an updated return because of which your income has increased. Yes. Now, if you follow what I am saying, you have already declared the additional income also. Uh, this example I just uh, first one lakh I did not declare a pre So it came in your notice, we declared, we decided and we filed one thirty eight updated. Again after some time, uh, the information came that the interest is two lakhs. So now I cannot file the updated return again. I cannot revise it. No, you can file updated return before thirty first March. Within a period yes, of sir. two years from the end of the assessment. Right, sir, after is, that, the window closes. So, see, you can't file only once. Only once. Only once. That is, see, that is up to you people again to take up the matter before the finance minister. But <laughs> 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 in this case, what's I just heart struck because recently, 
because he raised this question, uh, God just struck to me. What I will do is, on that one lakh also, I will tell him to pay the tax under 140. With interest, I will pay. Yes. After making payment, I will file a petition before the PCAT, 1192. Yes, yes. I will file 1192. Yes, I appreciate Naveen, he has given my answer because. <laughs> but how frequently you will get approval and donation for that? No, no, no. But no, no, no. no, no, no. Even if that doesn't happen, and if it gets collected for scrutiny, you will be saved from penalty. Because the, there is an intention to pay the tax before it is discovered by the department. Okay? To so that extent, because, see, these are all evolving things. There will always be some lacunas. And chartered accountants are the best people to find the lacunas, always. That is what I have seen in my long experience in the department. Because all major cases are subject to Interpretation. Statue is one thing, interpretation is another thing. But what is the essence of the statue and what is the correct thing is that should finally prevail over all the things. Okay. Yes, further questions? Sir, yes. once I find the updated return and give response, uh, how will I know what I find is accepted? So will we get any intimation saying it is accepted and closed or any further things could happen? No, no, see. That is also again I am saying this e-verification scheme is in a evolving stage. In fact, our department actually uh, has <laughs> said that once acceptable response has come, uh, we we should have we should have given you a uh, reply saying that your explanation is correct. But problem was that in those in that instruction, it, it the the words quoted were. Your response is considered correct for time being. <laughs> <laughs> so then there is no, there is, uh, there is um, uh, again it's of, uh, we are only increasing our work by communicating to you and again we are going to disappoint you if it is selected for scrutiny. Huh? So <laughs> point here is as long, see what I can tell you, you are the, you are the judge of your own affairs, you know your affairs the best. If you please file your return of income correctly and even if it's something is lacking, if you are listed with a notice, please give the explanation correctly, it will definitely be closed. If it does not get closed, we will always have another opportunity to respond to it. Sir, one question out of the subject. Yes. Because since it is criminal industry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, deforestation and types of it, it has come. Engineer help for hacking into IT portal, siphoning of the crores. Ah. Yes. So it has happened in my client's case also. So we acted upon early and uh, got the account of the fraudster blocked. So this uh, at least the department has to highlight and uh, see that is what is happening from time and again. This uh, refund scams have existed as long as, as as far early as I joined the department. They were on a smaller scale then, they increased, uh, they get spurted some time and um, unfortunately some people are involved also. Some people outside the department are involved sometimes. Even a few uh, outsourced people were also involved from the department in some of the cases. So uh, the department is continuously sensitizing in fact in fact right now right now security audit security audit is going on in our department you can ask our additional commissioner sir in fact in our in our INCA it happened yesterday so uh, we are trying to uh, we are trying to safeguard by creating uh, multiple security systems but these uh, uh, information technology especially uh, in a place like Bangalore, they are always a step, aside, a step ahead of us and they get into this. And in, in any case, uh, uh, remedy is there in some of the other statute, we have to file the case, we cover no, up. Yeah, file filed cyber crime also. Yes. They come out with nothing. That is, uh, that is the sad part, but uh, uh, safeguards are being made by the department to the uh, highest possible Humanly, what is possible to that extent, it is being made. But this was again a surprise that a 31-year-old could hack into.
aside from now. And then change in the bank account, email, mobile number, everything. Yes. Uh, and these are big amounts. Actually, it's very common where 20,000 is withdrawn from ATM based on the clicking of a link which is sent by some fraudster. But, uh, these are being done, but they will, uh, again, once you create a safeguard, another person will go a step ahead and uh, hopefully it will uh, reach an optimum stage where it will not be reached further. Any, yeah, please. Yeah. Why don't the OCCs are not provided to justify their answer? So if why? I select only partially correct, the information which is available is partially correct. Why can't they give a remark that this part is correct, this is not correct? No, 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 it's not like that. <coughs> what will happen is, once, once you say that it is partially correct, the department reaches out to the source. Again, it goes back and comes back. And say, and if the proper explanation is given by the source, that part which is incorrect will be removed. Because unfortunately, it is system driven. Huh? Assessing self can provide his response there by submitting the feedback. If I had a purchase of deposits, I have joint accounts, two persons were there. Banks are uploading for the two persons and two names, complete account. The first order will be actually the deposit. Joint account person is also getting uploaded. Why can't I give the data while submitting their response for justifying my response? That is the that is the that is the fault of the source entity, no, which is giving the information. Yeah, after that, sir, if the, it is gone back to the source and again coming back to me in the in the form of notice, I need to again give my that's what see again and again last week. See, we are again sensitizing the banks also in this regard. It has happened in multiple cases, especially in Bangalore. Many leading banks have given, ended up given, have ended up giving wrong information. Okay. Unfortunately, that is what I was trying to impress upon you people. If the wrong information is given and a notice will get generated, he will be visited by a notice. Okay. And uh, Sometimes uh, the difference amount is so huge that it will, you will be surprised. In cash withdrawal cases, in one case, the difference amount was in excess of 1,000 crore. That's why we are sensitizing these sources. In fact, we the last two days back, we have been in Canada, highlighting the problems faced by the SSCs and with the department. We are actually sensitizing the banks not to give the wrong information as it happened in this case. Joint account, they are giving same deposit in both the names and if when we go back also they give the same information. But you are again given one of, when it comes to 2021 uh, e-verification scheme, you will be given one opportunity where you will be giving uh, reply directly to the officer that time it will definitely be considered. Sir, as you said earlier, there is a purchase, uh, say suppose 100 crores purchases. He is traveling with about 40 50 sheets. There it says some you have to reply, you have to give feedback. Others it is silent, small amounts. So what you have to do? Everything you have to give the option. No, no, I can Some see. cases optional. Big cases, yeah. suppose out of 100 crores, 5 crores, above 1 crore and all, it says you have to give the feedback. No, no, no. The volume is it's not all. Uh, no, no. Where it is says again, uh, again uh, one more uh, thing, uh, uh, which uh, at the cost of reputation, uh, the e-verification scheme and this uh, uh, opportunity of giving the SSC uh, to rectify it uh, at the early stage is also in infant stage actually. This will go on improving actually. Uh, the number of uh, where if you say purchases and all are running into many. Uh, certainly, in the coming years, uh, there will be some improvements there and uh, hopefully your uh, compliance cost will decrease. Uh, yes? Uh, when there is a mismatch between the income tax database and the idea, whether uh, uh, communication by mail or SMS is invariably sent or not, because you will not be checking in the portal every time, follow up, whatever. At least when a communication is sent, it invariably goes invariably as an email goes. only. Oh. It invariably goes as an email only. Okay. My problem is that many of you people are not looking into your emails only. 
That's why I I did some research and came with that safe list and white list. Please incorporate that to your departmental mail, whereby it will never go into your spam folder. And from next year onwards, we are also assured that a SMS will be triggered, just like your faceless assessment which is happening. So that time at least I will have better compliance. And we will be happy with better compliance. And your, your compliance cost will also decrease. At least you should do the time. Baseless will give you three days. <laughs> 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 so Friday evening, notice. Exactly. Yeah. By Monday, you should uh, reply. Uh, another thing I would like to uh, tell you people is uh, when uh, three days is given, if in case we are unable to give it on the third day, uh, please don't give up. Uh, please give up fourth day, fifth day, sixth day till <laughs> till it is closed. So by the no, by the time it will be closed. <laughs> If the order comes then but we can do then it is as per the provisions of the act. <laughs> okay. Yes, any more questions? Anyway, I am very happy that uh, at least the last part was very lively because I was faced with a lot of questions. I would have been happy if there were many more, uh, many more crowd. I wish we had conducted it on a Saturday evening so that participation would have been more because when there is participation the participants and the presenters both will end up learning more. On this note, I thank you all and uh, close this session. That was an interactive session on e-verification scheme, compliance and updated return uh, from the Department of Income Tax, Intelligence and Investigation. <laughs> Naveen sir, thank you uh, about uh, that word uh, criminal. Let's, let's try getting that. Um, maybe it, it may take some time, but let's try. A round of applause for the both uh, speakers. Before the SSC gets into real investigation, complying uh, to the notice under e-verification helps SSCs, professionals and the department. As the saying goes, a stitch in time saves nine. Let's help each other to make this scheme successful. On behalf of members present here and managing committee members of Bangalore branch of uh, SHF ICI, I thank the Department of Income Tax, Intelligence and Criminal Investigation for deliberating on the subject. As a token of uh, gratitude and respect, uh, we would like to felicitate uh, Shri uh, Suresh Rao, Additional Director, uh, and uh, Shri Prakash VT, and Deputy Director. Uh, I request uh, all the MC members to come out to the dais and take the arms.
Thank you, MC members. Thank you, sir. Uh, with another request uh, to all the members present here to support Bangalore branch in its future programs uh, in the similar way, IACA Manjunathya Mahalur, Secretary for the branch, sign up for the day. I request all the members to have high tier for floor. I also recognize uh, the uh, presence of uh, ITO. Mr. Benjamin. Thank you. 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 Constant efforts of Bernard uh, and uh, Benjamin, who is uh, ITO in uh, our IMC department. <laughs> and uh, alongside is uh, Mr. Gupta, who is also another ITO. And some of our inspectors and other staff members are also present. I thank personally everybody. They are so appreciative and uh, so willing to accept this So busy actually. <laughs> come, come, come this for this. Come, come for this. Come for this. I'm so grateful to one Mr. Teddy. He had come to our office for some inquiry and then I didn't know how to go about it. Then he gave me the number of Ms. Geeta. Uh, she's a uh, wife. And yes, then uh, he gave Ms. Vidya's number. And it was so easy for me to coordinate. And I thank Mr. Krishnamurti sir, AO, and uh, the coordinator, Ms. Lata. They were so cordial and every time we had to tell them what to do. And it was done so perfectly. And it's really a privilege to come here and be among all the CAs. And uh, I think to learn from you all. You know? So many times you'll come, you'll speak, and uh, it's really a good time of learning from you all. So I really believe this year it will be a real success, e-verification, and we don't want single responses. We want the CAs to help their clients. Because most of the clients, what they do, the SSEs, they go to the CAs at the last moment. And then for us, it's so difficult to take a decision. And sometimes the response will be one word or just one line answer. This is the SSEs try to reply on their own. <coughs> So it's a great opportunity and I pray uh, spread the word so that uh, our work will be very easy because it's not easy for us to work in the department. There's a lot of work to do and we are so happy because Karnataka and Goa has uh, been at the top most to pay their taxes. So I really am so happy and glad that it is the effort of each one of you, right, uh, inspiring your uh, SSEs to pay their taxes. So I want always Karnataka and Goa and Bangalore to be at the top. So you all should help us. <laughs> so thank you so much for each one of you. And it was really a successful event. Thank you and we look forward to have more programs with you. Thank you so much.
considered. Sir, as you said earlier, there is a purchases, say suppose 100 crores purchases, is leveling it about 40, 50 sheets. There it says some you have to reply, you have to give feedback. Others it is silent, small amounts. So what you have to do, everything you have to give the option. No, no, I guess some cases optional. Big cases, yeah. suppose out of 100 crores, 5 crores, above 1 crore and all, it says you have to give a feedback. Yeah. 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 Where it is says again, uh, again uh, one more uh, thing, uh, uh, which uh, uh, at the cost of reputation, uh, the e-verification scheme and this uh, uh, opportunity of giving the SSC uh, to rectify it uh, at the early stage is also an infant stage actually. This will go on improving actually. Uh, the number of uh, where if you say purchases and all are running into many. Uh, certainly, in the coming years, uh, there will be some improvements, and uh, hopefully, your uh, compliance cost will decrease. Uh, yes. Uh, when there is a mismatch between the income tax database and the ITR, whether uh, a communication by mail or SMS is invariably sent or not, because you will not be checking in the portal every time, follow up, whatever. At least when a communication is sent, it invariably goes as an email only. Oh. It invariably goes as an email only. Okay. My problem is that many of you people are not looking into your emails only. That's why I I did some research and came with that safe list and white list. Please incorporate that to your departmental mail, whereby it will never go into your spam folder. And from next year onwards, we are also assured that a SMS will be triggered, just like your faceless assessment which is happening. So that time at least I will have better compliance. And we will be happy with better compliance. And your, your compliance cost will also decrease. At least you should do the time. Faceless will be three days. <laughs> <laughs> so Friday evening. Notice. By Monday you should uh, reply. Uh, another thing I would like to uh, tell you people is, uh, when uh, three days is given, in case we are unable to give it on the third day, uh, please don't give up. Please give on fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, till <laughs> till it is closed. So by the time uh, it will If the order comes, then nothing can be done. And it is as per the provisions of the Act. <laughs> Yes, any more questions? Anyway, I am very happy that uh, at least the last part was very lively because I was faced with a lot of questions. I would have been happy if there were many more, uh, many more crowd. I wish we had conducted it on a Saturday evening so that participation would have been more because when there is participation, the participants and the presenters both will end up learning more. On this note, I thank you all and uh, close this. That was an interactive session on e-verification scheme, compliance and updated return uh, from the Department of Income Tax, Intelligence and Investigation. <laughs> Navin sir, thank you uh, about uh, that word uh, criminal. Let's, let's try getting that. Um, maybe it, it, it may take some time, but let's try. A round of applause for the both uh, speakers. Before the SSC gets into real investigation, complying uh, to the notice under e-verification helps SSCs, professionals and the department. As the saying goes, a stitch in time saves nine. Let's help each other to make this scheme successful. On behalf of members present here and managing committee members of Bangalore branch of SISF ICI, I thank the Department of Income Tax, Intelligence and Criminal Investigation for deliberating on the subject. As a token of uh, gratitude and respect, uh, we would like to felicitate uh, Shri uh, Suresh Rao, Additional Director, uh, and uh, Shri Prakash VT, uh, Deputy Director. Uh, I request uh, all the MC members to come out to the dais and take the arms.
Thank you, MC members. Thank you, sir. Uh, with another request uh, to all the members present here to support Bangalore branch in its future programs uh, in the similar way, ICA Manjana Temhandur, Secretary for the branch, sign up for the day. I request all the members to have high tier for floor. I also recognize uh, the uh, presence of uh, ITO. Mr. Benjamin, thank you.